And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Over 10 years later, and Ticket to Ride is still one of my favorite games. And they've since come out with Ticket to Ride Europe, Ticket to Ride Markelin, uh, Ticket to Ride Switzerland. They've come out with several map packs too, and this is the fifth map pack. Now when I heard about this map pack, I was more excited than I normally was for two reasons. One, the map pack does Pennsylvania, which is the state in America in which I was born. Very exciting about that to see the cities that I know something about. And the other side of the map pack was the United Kingdom, which excited me because they added tech building to that, which was, you know, like a totally, completely different thing. But the Pennsylvania board adds stocks. So two-sided board, which is something I haven't done for a while. We're glad to see the two-sided boards come back. I mean, this thing is chock full of different cards. You need the base game or Ticket to Ride Europe to play this. But, and I'm assuming if you're watching this, you already know how to play those games too. Uh, but this does add some wrinkles and boy ever does it add wrinkles. Let me show you. The first map is a map of Pennsylvania, although technically it's a map of Pennsylvania with some New York and New Jersey thrown in on the side. It comes with the entire thing of tickets uh, so that you'll be able to make different routes and the tickets range from two points all the way up to 22 points. There's a two points from Philadelphia to Atlantic City, got to get those ladies down at their gambling, or from Wheeling to Albany. So there's just different tickets here. This is basically your standard ticket. You can see the board here is a pretty standard board. There's a seven route here in the bottom and a few six routes, a lot of double routes around the outside. But if you cut across in the middle, mostly single routes. There are a couple features from other boards that aren't in the original Ticket to Ride. There's a country here, Ontario. Some of the tickets want you to connect to Ontario. So you can do it from Buffalo or from Erie. But th uh, these two Ontario sites do not connect to each other. So if I need to connect Erie to Buffalo, I can't connect here and then here. You also notice that these show trains on these spots. Those are ferries. To put a, a, something on a ferry, you basically need to discard a wild. So this needs two wilds and another color, while this one here needs exactly a wild. But that is not really the main focus of this board. I mean, yes, it's a new board with new tickets and things. But if you'll notice, next to each spot on the board, there are one or multiple different railroad company symbols. So you'll see there's three symbols down here in the route between Chambersburg and Harrisburg. There's two here between Harrisburg and York. Some of them have a lot, like up here between Allentown and Scranton Wilkesbury. But some of them, and then there's a couple, like this one here between Williamsport and Scranton Wilkesbury. There are none. When you build a route between cities that has one or more of these symbols, you get to take one of the share cards of that company. There are nine different companies and they have a varying amount of shares. For example, the Pennsylvania Railroad has 15 shares, while the BRMP Railroad, Buffalo, Rochester, and Pittsburgh Railroad, has only two shares. These shares are numbered, so for example, the Reading Railroad here has seven cards and they're numbered. You can see the top one says one out of seven and the bottom says seven out of seven. When you decide to take a share of one of these companies, you simply take that share and place it face down in front of you. They all have the same backing. If a company is completely out of shares, then you can't take one of those shares. That's pretty obvious. Um, so again, you'll want to try to take the different shares of the different types as soon as you can. And the reason they're numbered is because at the end of the game, each share company is going to give out points based on how many people have that share. Or whoever has the most of each share will get the top number, then second most and then third most and maybe fourth and fifth, for example, here on the B&O Railroad, while others only give it out to first and second, like the Jersey Central Line. Now, if you have the most shares on the Jersey Central Line, you get eight points. The second most shares gets five. If on any of these companies there's a tie, then whoever has the lowest numbered share will break that tie. And you can see that many of the companies have some pretty high point shares, like the Pennsylvania Railroad, the first place person here gets 30 points. So that can be a lot of points. And these points are added at the end of the game. This game also gives points for having the most tickets. Whoever has most tickets gets a bonus of 15 points at the end of the game. 
So at the end of the game, like a normal Ticket to Ride game, you will then reveal all those shares, calculate these extra points, add them to the totals, and whoever has the most points is the winner. The other side of the board is a very completely different thing. This is the United Kingdom that it shows you, and you can see there's all sorts of different routes going all over the place. This game also, this side of the board also comes with its own set of tickets, and there's all sorts of tickets involved here. The tickets have different numbers, although they stand lengthwise, just like the board does. And again, there's some very small tickets. And in fact, there are not very many huge tickets in this particular set. Most of the tickets are rather small. This, de this deck also comes with its own set of train cards. So the train cards are nice looking cards. The reason this comes with its own set of train cards is because in this deck, there are 20 wilds rather than the 15 that are in most tickets ride set ticket sets. So you have 20 wilds here and then the different colors like normal. Also in this game, you are allowed to use any four cards as a wild. Finally in this game, you will only get 35 trains instead of 45. <laughs> Did I say finally? Well, there's some more than that. At the beginning of the game, players are only allowed to build to English cities. So down here, you can only build in England. You're also allowed to only build on one or two routes. So, for example, let's take a look here closer to board. On my first turn, I can build from here to here, Birmingham to Reading, because that's a two route between Reading and Birmingham. I can build from here to here. I can't build from here to here because, A, that's a three route, and also it goes to Wales, which I'm not allowed to build in. This is a two route, but I still can't do it because it goes to Wales. I can't connect down here because it goes to Wales and because it's a ferry. The only thing you're allowed to do, breaking the rules wise, is you are allowed to build this huge route down here, which requires 10 segments, three of them having to be wild. This one is worth 40 points. But to do everything else, you're going to need technology. At the beginning of your, your turn, you can discard wilds or groups of four cards, remember they become a wild, to take technologies. When you have a technology in front of you, that opens up new things you can do on the board. For example, you have the Wales concession, which lets you connect to Wales cities. Um, here you have the Scotland concession, which lets you go up to Scotland. The Ireland and France concession, which lets you go to both France and to Ireland. You have the mechanical stoker. Now you can do three routes. The superheated steam boiler. Now this costs two wilds, but now you can do four, five, or six routes. The propellers. Now you can go on ferry routes. The boiler, every time you connect any route, you get an extra point for doing so. The steam turbine, anytime you connect a ferry route, you get plus two points. If you have both of these, you'll get three points every time you connect a ferry route. The double heading at the end of the game, all your tickets will give you an extra two points. The booster, this lets you trade in three cards for as a wild rather than four. And then the right of way, this one here is a card that you buy and you instantly use, so it will always stay here. This one costs four wilds, just like the double heading costs four wilds. But this one here lets you build a route on the board next to someone else's build a route, even if you normally could not do so. So you really wanted to connect two cities? Well, you pay four wilds, and you can do that. There are also um, several other cards. These are called advanced cards. You don't have to use them. There is no most tickets in this game or most or longest route, but there are these cards you can add in that you have to take before the deck is shuffled once. You can take risky business and at the end of the game, if you have the most tickets, you get 20 points. Otherwise, you lose 20. The equalizing beam, if you have the most, the longest route, you get 15. Otherwise, you lose 15. Diesel power, it takes one less tr train card to connect two routes. You always have to play one, but you can. it takes one less. Water tenders, when you're drawing blind from the top of the deck, you can take three cards instead of two. And thermal compressor, this is a one-time use thing, just like the right of way, uh, it lets you build two routes in a row rather than just one on your turn. And so the technologies here are going to let you go all over the board. Pretty much everything else is the same. At the end of the game, you, which ends the same way, you'll get points. But basically the technologies just allow you to spread across the board in a bit more slow of a fashion. For me, this is easily my favorite map pack to come out so far. And you might say, well, you're biased because it's Pennsylvania. That's kind of cool, but that's really not what it is. The fact is, is that while I've liked all the other map packs, I don't know, there's not one I haven't liked. I, I love how annoying and tough India is. I like the, the evilness of Africa and just how well Switzerland plays with two to three players. But this particular set, wow, they both play completely differently. 
Pennsylvania is a map that you can play with people who are new to Ticket to Ride. You can even play with people who've never played Ticket to Ride before because it's very simple. It adds a stocks to it, which is a very simple concept, but fun. What those stocks do is they force people to play to the board quickly. Now, many times when I play Ticket to Ride, I build up a huge hand of cards and I start playing routes out on the board because, you know, I don't want to give away where I'm going too quickly, and it's fun to be able to play a bunch of different routes on the board as time goes by. Here, you want to get those routes out as quickly as you can because you want to get stock. You want to diversify in stock because even having one in many of the companies is enough to give you some points in that company. Pennsylvania Railroad, for example, gives six points to the person who has the fewest stocks. Well, if I don't take one of those cards over the course of the game, I'll lose out on six points. It gives 30 points to whoever has the most, though. So should I fight over that with other players? And that stock is all over the board. It's going to go very quickly. So there's some very interesting you know, additions, but it's not very brain burning either. You just go around and collect the stock. And for a simple addition to the game, I was kind of expecting the Pennsylvania board to be kind of like, eh, okay. I was really excited about the UK board. But the Pennsylvania board, I thought, ah, it's going to be okay. But it was really good and has become one of my favorite boards to play on. The UK board, on the other hand, is as good as I thought it'd be, but wow, very cerebral. With 35 trains, I thought that the game would go faster, but it doesn't because you have this slow buildup. Everyone's trying to get the different technologies as quickly as they can. What should you go for first? Should you, you know, you, obviously you're going to look at your tickets. Maybe you have tickets that go to Wales or Scotland or, or the Ireland, and so you want to get those first, or do you want to be able to build on three routes before other people or ferries, or do you want to even uh, maybe take the three cards equals a wild? Because I challenge you to play this and not use four cards as a wild at some point. It will likely happen. I do like that buying the technology is not your turn, but it's something you can do before your turn, so it doesn't feel like a waste as you buy tech. And everyone in the game starts with one wild card in their hand. You start with a wild card and then four other cards. Um, so you can buy a technology on turn one. I do like that. That's a, a nice aspect. And so I, I thought that was good. It's good to see things build up. And then there's that 40 point route. Everyone's sitting there going, ah, in this game, 40 points is a lot. But if you save up a lot of cards for that route and someone beats you to it, then what are you going to do? I mean, you can build elsewhere on the board, but still. Neat, but very cerebral because you're sitting there going, ooh, which one should I build? Now, I'd be cautious about adding in those advanced technologies. They're interesting. Two of them are gambles because you have to buy them before the deck is shuffled once. And so you don't know at that point if you're going to have the longest route or the most tickets. You're just guessing. And once you buy those, someone else might go out of their way to make you because that's a 40-point swing. Uh, the advanced technologies, the expert ones, are interesting, but I don't know that I'll ever see a game played where someone doesn't immediately buy the one that lets you draw three off the top. That's a really good special ability. Um, I would, if that's in the game, I'll spend my first turn and spend all five of my cards, the wild plus the other four as a wild, to do that because for the rest of the game, I can draw three cards off the top. This game also has a heavy emphasis on how important wilds are. You don't often see wilds drawn in a Ticket to Ride game, uh, especially by expert players, because it's almost always better to get two cards than one wild. However, here you see them drawn more often because of text, and so it is possible for the cards to clog up because there might be a lot of green, for example. No one wants green. And so I, I wonder how that will play. I'd like to see more future games with that, but I think it's okay. Eventually, someone's going to want green, but I notice that wilds don't sit there or we get enough wilds where it clears out. That never happened in the games I've played. Anyhow, if you are new to Ticket to Ride, you can get this because the Pennsylvania map is going to be fantastic fun for you. If you've played Ticket to Ride so much and you're starting to say, ah, I'm starting to see the same things over and over again, which I means you've played it a lot, this will still appeal to you because this new UK board is just amazing thing with technology added and, you know, which route am I going to go? And there's just a lot in it. It makes it a much more complex game, and I like that. Both boards look beautiful. You get a ton of cards in this box. I mean, really, you could take out five of the wilds from the, the tickets for UK and play the Pennsylvania side. The only thing you need are some trains from the other sets. So that's cool. Anyway, as I said, best map pack yet. Highly recommend it. Dice Tower Judgment into my collection. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. 
The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boo? Boo?